Today we're looking at an Asus Z790 Pro Wi-Fi motherboard and why Z790 this late into the 14th gen product cycle, especially with 15th gen or core ultra coming with a brand new architecture. Well, because of this guy right here, the 14th gen Core i9 14900K, this much maligned processor, it's getting a new lease on life thanks to microcode. And not only have we had a microcode fix, we've had an updated microcode fix, a permanent fix, or so they say. This motherboard is actually sealed. Look at this. There's an Asus seal on it. And I've had this for months. Sorry, JJ. And uh, it's time, finally, to break the seal. So what exactly are we going to do here today? We're going to take the 14th gen Core i9, run it on whatever firmware this has out of the box, look at voltage calls, actual voltage, thermals, things like that. Then we're going to update it to that brand new microcode and do it all over again. And just compare and contrast. Like, are we finally to the point where we can run 14th gen with full stability and reasonable thermals? Is that even possible? Could I install an air cooler without throttling? We'll see. Here's a closer look at the Tough Gaming Z790 Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. This features, among other things, the Q release. See this button right here? Now, this particular board does not have any 5th gen PCI Express M.2 slots. So bear that in mind. You have one Gen 5 slot right here. Everything else is Gen 4, including M.2. Taking a look at the I.O. on the back of the board here, you have HDMI and DisplayPort, a 10 gigabit and a 20 gigabit USB-C port. You have your USBs of various descriptions, both 5 and 10 gigabit. 2.5 gigabit Intel Ethernet, multi-channel audio, including SPDIF out, and you've got Wi-Fi 6E as well. So let's get this on the test platform and install our CPU. Okay, the system is now up and running, and we're running BIOS version 1420 out of the box. I have just completed two runs of the old Cinebench R20. We have single-threaded and multi-threaded results. Single-thread, just for reference here, 896 points, 15,652 for multi-thread. And over on the voltage side of things, the maximum voltage that it asked for, and this was during the single threaded test, I believe, was 1.466. The actual delivered voltage was lower. According to the motherboard, it was 1.403. Temperatures, of course, immediately started throttling at 101C in the multi-threaded test. Now, the really crazy number is wattage. And if you look here, the PL2 power limit is 4,095 watts by default. The only thing I changed from default motherboard settings was to set the CPU fan to 100%. Everything else is in an out-of-box state with this BIOS version, which is uh, 1420. So with a genuinely unlimited PL2 power limit, the actual package power during that last multi-threaded workload was 383.9 watts. Now this is, of course, a 253-watt part, but Intel's partners have been running it without any power limit since launch. Of course, you can manually enforce all limits, but that is not the default behavior, at least for this motherboard and most of the others that I've ever used. So now from a completely idle state with the sensor status reset over here, I'm going to start a multi-threaded workload. This is Cinebench 2024. Okay, the multi-core test is over. Uh, of course, 102C was the maximum temperature. 382.845 was indeed the highest package power. And the highest voltage call was 1.457 with 1.376 being delivered. Let's go to single core. 137 points on that test. The multi-core was 2,255. The only change here is the V-core went up to 1.412 according to the Super IO chip. Maximum 1.457 requested. We'll zero this out and do one final test. 
the old classroom CPU cycles render. Okay, it just ended two minutes, 36.66 seconds on that test. We hit 104 C. Motherboard reported voltage did not exceed 1.376 again. So a maximum of 1.478 was requested and the CPU package power did not exceed 370.722. I think it's time to update the BIOS. So we're going to go from 1420 to 1666. Okay, so revision 1666 is installed. So we're gonna go into BIOS setup. I'm gonna set defaults. The only change I'll make is to Q fan control where I will put it at full speed again. And that's it. Save and exit. Okay, right off the bat, PL2 power limit is actually at 253 watts, and that's without setting Intel defaults or anything. So actual Intel specified power limits for PL1 and PL2. So let's look at what the actual voltage looks like. It really didn't look that bad before. So I'm thinking the 14900K did not have the same kind of crazy voltage calls that I was seeing from the 13900KS. Maybe that's the CPU I should be testing. But anyway, let's run Cinebench all core. This is the old R20. 74C CPU package temp, which is excellent for this test. Score was 14,277. That's down. Look at the power. Package power was 270.116 max. Clearly that was just a momentary spike because overall temperatures were significantly lower. Voltage maximum call was 1.469. Delivered was 1.385. So voltage doesn't seem to be down, but thermals are way down. Overall power draw is way down. I'll run the single threaded test now. Well, we did see a drop of over a thousand points in the multi-core test. Single core test was up one point, so margin of error. I mean, we, we went from 896 to 897. There's generally a difference of a point or two run to run, so dead even there. Maximum voltage call was actually 1.489, and maximum delivered was 1.421. So it looks like voltage is actually slightly up, but power draw is way down, and thermals are way down. Let's do the multi-core test in Cinebench 2024. The min-max has been reset between tests here. All right, so the score was 2,101 this time. Maximum power draw, 276.883. Maximum voltage delivered was 1.359. And we topped out at 87C. The room is 20.6C for reference. Okay, single-threaded. And we'll come back for the result. Okay, the single core test is done. One point down from the run with the original BIOS, so 136 versus 137. Maximum voltage call was 1.499. Again, that's up. 1.430 was the actual measured voltage on the core. Thermals were in the high 50s during that test. I haven't reset it since the multi-core test. So with Cinebench out of the way, we're back into Blender. Okay, so the Blender classroom render is over. That took two minutes, 49.76 seconds, a little bit longer than before the BIOS update. Maximum voltage was 1.323. Maximum call was 1.426. Power was 270.763. That's momentary, of course. Most of the time it's spent in the 255 range on average, somewhere between 252 and 258. The scores are lower. Multi-threaded workloads like Blender, like Cinebench, where you're stressing all the cores, you're going to see lower thermals. You're going to see much lower power draw. Voltage, if anything, is slightly up, but that's sample specific. Single-threaded is essentially even. It's within one point, but where you're really going to see a difference is in anything that's fully multi-threaded, stressing all the cores, uh, like a, you know, video transcoding, any kind of rendering. But 
what really impressed me the most about this is that I never exceeded the mid to high 80s under any of these workloads with a, with an air cooler. Now, granted, it's a big air cooler, and I'm doing a separate little video review of that, but the Starcrack Elite, it's actually delivering thermals that are significantly below the TJ Maxx, the threshold. So we're, we're within 20 of max here, but not throttling with the CPU cooler is, is a big deal. When you can actually use air again. And I can back down from using 100% fan speed as well and get this droning sound that may or may not be blocked by the noise reduction feature of this wireless microphone. To recap, across the multi-threaded benchmarks that we ran, the Intel microcode update provided, on average, nearly 107 watts lower power draw, 22C lower max CPU temps, but there was an 8.1% average reduction in performance, and we did see slightly elevated voltage though only in the neighborhood of 0 0.02 volts. And then the highest delivered voltage was 1.421. So well below what is considered safe for these CPUs. Everything was within Intel spec. We finally have a BIOS that will deliver the actual 253 watt PL1 and PL2 limits for even a Core i9 in the 14th gen. So it might actually be safe to buy 14th gen. Now, as to the motherboard we tested, the Tough Gaming Z790 Pro Wi-Fi from Asus, this is a nice kind of entry-level Z790 solution. It currently sells for $239.99 US. You're getting 16 plus one plus one power stages and a six layer PCB. Good connectivity as expected from an Intel Z790 platform, though there are no Gen 5 M.2 slots, so bear that in mind. But this was not an in-depth review of this motherboard by any means. This is just an overview of the board. What we were really focused on was, of course, the Intel microcode update, and those results spoke for themselves. Really, anything that changes the default PL2 from 4095 to 253 is a welcome addition. Of course, time will tell if today's buyer of a 14th gen Core i9 processor enjoys trouble-free performance for years to come under this latest microcode fix, which is hopefully the last one. All right, I hope you got something out of this and thank you for watching.